Hi, this is Aaron from Doodle Labs, and in this video I'm going to be reviewing the Link Status Log Utility. So the Link Status Log Utility is commonly used for uh, one of two purposes. The first would be in your apple actual application. So for example, you're flying a drone, it's 10 kilometers away and the link breaks, and you want to figure out why it broke. So it could be, for example, uh, poor RSSI, or it could be network congestion, so maybe there's too much interference, or maybe you're just putting too much data um, through the network. So you would uh, run the link status log utility, perform the test flight, and when it comes back, download the logs and try and find out what happened. So the second purpose would be to actually diagnose issues with the radios themselves. So uh, the way you do that is you you'd set the radios up in a very um, nice test setup, like the one I've got in this picture here. Uh, once again, you'd run the link status log and then you would analyze the logs. So um, what I suggest is you make sure that first of all you have at least uh, sufficient path loss between the radios. And so you want to make sure that there's the RSSI on either end of the link is no more than around negative 40 dBm. So you can do that by spacing the radios apart uh, and also by adding attenuation to the link. The second thing you want to make sure is that there's no polarization mismatch between the um, two ends of the link on the antennas. So the easiest way to do that is just to point all the antennas upwards or in the same direction. And when you do that, you should also make sure that there's adequate spacing between the, the antennas. So that's typically at least half a wavelength spacing between the antennas. Okay, so once you've got your radio set up, the next thing to do is enable the link status log. So you do that by going into your web GUI, make sure you've clicked on advanced settings, and then go to services and link status log. From there, make sure that enable link status log checkbox is ticked and click save and apply. Let's do that. So once you do that, the link status log itself will restart. And when you're finished with your application, you can download the logs. What we're going to do is we're going to log into the radio and see what's actually happening. So, so when you run the link status log, a new folder is created at slash temp slash long term log. And if I do a listing of this directory, I can see three files. The first one is a PID directory, and you shouldn't touch that. It's needed for the running of the application. And next we have a status.json and an actual log. So if I look at the status.json, um, you can see a lot of information about the link. And this is just a single timestamp. If, if I look at the log itself, you can see it's just a collection of timestamps of the same status.json. So the status.json is the latest timestamp. So what we're going to do now is we're going to review the logs. When you, when you download the logs, you're going to get this information plus a lot of other information. Let's go ahead and click download. And then we'll open the log. So I'm using a 7-zip uh, file manager to look at the logs. And you can see that the log that was downloaded includes the actual log, status.json, a whole bunch of other files, and uh, the config. So if I go into the config, I can actually see um, my radio's configuration. So if I were reviewing this, I would probably have a look at the wireless file. And I can see things like um, the Transmit power control is enabled. I can see the channel bandwidth, what channel I'm operating on, um, the fact that I'm in, a, in mesh mode. Next, I would probably look at the diff serve um, file. And this tells me the traffic prioritization settings. So I can see that I've, in my case, is actually disabled. Um, and of course, diversity rates and low latency are also disabled. I can also see which ports are prioritized. And then another thing that's quite useful is the network settings. So here I can see um, the mesh settings, as well as any of the network settings like IP address and things like that. 
So there are other things that could come in, uh, could be useful for us to review if you were to ever send us these logs. But hopefully after this video, you'll be able to do it yourself. Okay, so in this um, folder, going back up one directory, um, I'm just going to cover a couple of important files, and then we'll look at the logs themselves. So dmessage is actually your kernel log. And so you can see if there are any important uh, messages being sent to the kernel. Then messages is actually the system log. So it has a lot more messages. And applications running on the radio typically print out um, debug messages to the system log. Aside from that, I could also look at the um, release, uh, release file. This tells me I'm on this firmware version. Mine is a custom version, so that's why it's, it doesn't match anything on the website. And the rest I'll leave you to review yourself. The most important log here is this. It's an actual log of what happened uh, during the running of the radio. So now we're going to talk about the organization. There's basically um, four sections, you could say. So the first section is, so first of all, every line represents a timestamp. Um, and at each time st at, it, at each time stamp, you, you get one new status.json. So this is a JSON. And you could use a program like JQ to parse this data if you want. So you can see the local time here. And this is the time since the epoch. And it's incrementing every two to three seconds. So the first section is the system information, and uh, this shows you the CPU load, the memory, and then the timestamp. And next we have general um, radio diagnostics. So the operating channel, the operating frequency, the channel bandwidth, but then an important number here is the noise. This is the back of, uh, a reading of the background noise. Now it's only a small uh, snapshot of the noise, so its accuracy is somewhat limited but it can help if you do have a lot of background noise. So activity is the amount of um, network congestion. It's basically a percentage measure of uh, what percentage of the time the airwaves are actually in use, and it's out of 100. So if you have 50% usage, it means 50% of the time there's some signals in the air being either received or transmitted. And if you, if you ever get to around the 70 or 80% mark, it means your network is highly congested. So the next uh, section is station statistics. So this is basically for every um, peer of this radio, you're getting um, an array, and the array has this information. So the MAC address, which is the peer MAC address. The inactive time is the time in milliseconds since a packet was received. So you would normally expect this to be just a few tens of milliseconds. But if you see a very large number, um, that it means it's been a long time since you've received a packet, and it means the link is probably bad. The RSSI is the combined signal strength from both antennas. Packet loss ratio is the, it's the actual layer 2 packet loss uh, percentage. So in this case, it's very low. And then we can also see how many packets were sent to this node, the number that were retried, and how many failed, and what MCS rate those packets were sent at. And the last section is the mesh statistics. And basically every uh, mesh node has an originator address. And uh, you can see the transmit quality, which is a figure of merit, which is just out of 255, that describes how good the link is. And probably the most important one is hop status, which tells you whether this node is uh, directly linked or it has to go over a hop. And the last seen time is, it's also like the inactive time, but it's only for the originator messages, which are basically these beacon packets that are coming from every um, node. So one thing I'll point out is that um, this, this file comes from the latest uh, firmware release, and it was actually revamped compared to the previous release uh, in order to make the link status um, log less uh, CPU in intensive. And so there's actually some fields that are missing since the uh, older firmware release, and we're going to work on that and try and um, get some of those things back. So for example, the RSSI only reports combined signal strength, and also we no longer um, present the uh, 
the amount of data in the network. So that's probably going to find its way back in the next um, in the next firmware release. Okay, so once you've actually got this number, uh, what you really need to do is, if for example you if you see the activity is really high, then you know it's probably network congestion. If you see the RSSI is low, so for example negative 80 to negative 90, it means the link was uh, about to die, and so you know you would start looking at maybe issues with the antennas, uh, issues with the connectors. Can you can you get better antennas? And um, the next thing you would want to do is actually compare this to um, a link budget. So if I go back here, we actually have a throughput estimate, estimation tool which is on our on the previous version of our technical library, but it hasn't yet been ported to the latest version. But you can actually still use this link, so doodlelabs.bitbucket.io slash radiotech slash throughput, and you can actually use this throughput estimation tool. So um, I've already clicked the Analyze button. You would set this up to match um, your link. And then you can compare you know, the expected throughput and the, and the distance that you would get and the amount of Fresnel zone or Fresnel zone clearance you'd need um, to get a good link. OK, with that, I hope you've got a good idea of how to use the link status log and how it can be useful in your um, application. If you have any more questions, feel free to con uh, contact our tech support. And otherwise, have a good day. I hope this helped.